Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, you lovely people, whichever one it is for you. Welcome back to Liddy White Lane. I hope that you're all having a ruddy good Monday and start to your week wherever you are in the world and whatever you are planning to get up to. Now, nursing a hangover this morning after yesterday's absolute pile of pygmy hippophyses performance from Andrew Poster Cogley Spurs side. Fair play to Ipswich, you have to give them credit. Unbelievable overhead kick from Schmodix, forced a second goal and defended really well for the rest of the game. They were worthy winners. The Tractor Boys travelled to our land and mowed us down. But from a Spurs perspective, it was nowhere near good enough. That's five losses in 11 games so far this season. 16 losses in our last 38. And in my opinion, it can't go on like this. It really, really can't. In my opinion... This manager is no longer the right man for the job. I've tried to get behind him. I really, really have. The Man United game, a false dawn of hope looking back in hindsight. Same as the Aston Villa game, same as the West Ham game. They were great wins, great performances, but there's no consistency with these performances and with these results. The manager has been inconsistent with his substitutions this season. At times, he's got it absolutely bang on. But he's watching the team capitulate yesterday and does nothing about it. And then when he does make changes, he brings on the likes of Timo Werner when we need a goal. One of the worst finishers at the football club and in the Premier League. And leaves our most creative player, Madison, on the bench. The Crystal Palace game. We're one nil down. Who does he bring on? Richardson and Werner. Two of the worst finishers at the football club when we need a goal. And starts playing some mad 4-2-4 formation. The Brighton game. We lose 3-2. Wait. You know, waits until we're 3-2 down to actually make some changes. And then we see the West Ham game where he makes a change at half-time. He gets it bang on. We see the Villa game where he makes changes. He gets it bang on. But he doesn't do it consistently enough. The results aren't consistent enough. The tactical tweaks and the substitutions aren't consistent enough. And in my opinion, he's no longer the right man for the job. You know, and out is the big phrase that everyone's using. But yeah... I've been struggling with this manager for quite a while. I was close to, you know, giving up all faith after the Arsenal game. But then you had, you know, games like the Man United one. And again, false dawns of hope, man. Constant false dawns of hope supporting this football club. I can't with a guy who's got a record of 17 wins, 16 losses in his last 38 games, you know. As I say, five losses in 11, four away wins in those 38 games. This year, it's just been all horrendous, to be honest. Lack of consistency with subs, tactics. I've taken down a few notes of the reasons that I have to be Angel and not want this guy at the football club anymore. But, you know, that's all the stuff on the pitch. Then there's off the pitch, the contradicting comments that he comes out to. If I'm holding this man to his word, and if every Spurs fan is holding this man to his word, then why is everyone not Angel? Because he said pre-season, there is no reason we can't go for the league. He said every single signing is his and that he's happy with the window. We currently sat mid-table with his players, that he says. Why are we not all calling him out? He's had more backing than Jose and Conte combined in two years. And everyone just seems to protect this guy. I get it if you're at, you know, Anjin and you like him and you do think he's the right man for the job. Fair enough. But when you start to criticise him after a horrendous loss like yesterday, your Australian fans and these absolute Ange lovers jumping all over you. Why can you not criticise this manager like any other? I don't get it. I don't get it. Since when can we not criticise, you know, managers as fans? But only now certain fans are adopting the tag of, oh, armchair managers know better than the actual ones. Where was this when Conte was in charge and everyone wanted him out? Or Jose and everyone wanted him out? Because both of those managers got sacked for far less than Ange Postacoglu is doing right now. Nuno had a better start to his season at Spurs than Ange Postacoglu has had. But we play good football, which makes people believe, which has made me believe at times. But I've given up belief because I don't care what it looks like. I care about the numbers on the scoreline at the end of the game. And they've not been good enough consistently. We... We're consistently inconsistent, man. You know? The results haven't been good enough. And again, occasionally, he'll pull a rabbit out of the hat. He'll make changes when he needs to. We'll get the tactics bang on. And we'll pull off a massive win, like the Man United one. Or the Villa one. But then we'll follow games up by losing to relegation fodder, you know? 
I don't think the guy's the right man for the job anymore. I really, really don't. Comments as well, such as I'm okay with conceding goals, the lack of focus on um on defensive drills in training. Yeah, if you're holding him to his word about going for the league title, about being happy with the window, then I struggle to back him anymore. I really, really do. Look, everyone's in talk to their own opinion. A lot of people watching this will probably still be Angie. And fair enough, I have been for a long time. I've been close to saying this for quite a while, though. And yeah, I've given up faith. There are certain performances and results like yesterday that are simply unacceptable. When you put those performances and results with all the other horrendous and poor ones that we've had this year, and since that good run at the beginning of last season, the new manager bounce that he had, it's been a shower of shit. It really, really has. Look, the manager has to take accountability for yesterday. The substitutions, the game management was really, really poor. But the players as well can't be hiding behind another manager. They need to take accountability. We've got a weak squad and we need a leader, in my opinion. Where's the player slapping them all around the face when we're 2-0 down saying, come on, lads? Or the player who's going over to them all, lifting their chin up and saying, come on, lads? Where's the motivator? Where's the person leading the group? I don't care whether they're an angry person or whether we can see in their chin up, lads, let's go again. We can recover from this, you know. Every single time we can see the goal. You look at players, especially when you see these videos from the stands and everyone's just chucking hands around, head down. Where's the, you know, the leader, the guy running up to them all and motivating them and trying to get them going again? However they do it, you know. You can have leaders like, um, like Harry Kane at Spurs who led by example. Or you can have leaders like Roy Keane at Manchester United, you know, who led by what he'd do to players when they were performing poorly. Man United were afraid to perform poorly because you wouldn't want Fergie coming down on you or Roy Keane, you know. There's no leaders on the pitch. No leaders. Jung Min Sun, still one of the most clinical finishers in the world, in my opinion. He is on the decline, but he's not a captain. I've been saying this for a long time. He is not a captain. He is not a leader. Christian Romero, a good centre-back, but not a leader because he can't lead by example. How can he be telling everyone else to, you know, defend better when he looks checked out so far this season, when he looks like he's thinking about that Real Madrid offer and gets caught, uh, caught ball-watching every couple of games? You know, there's no leader in this team. There's no leader on the sideline. And in my opinion, we need to get rid of Ange Postacoglu. We need to bring in someone else who can get the group together and use common sense at certain points in games. At the end of yesterday's game, we're 2-1 down and we're tapping it about. You know, get your big lads up top and smash it long. It's football basics, man. It's the basics of football. Get Draggers in up there. Solanke Central. Have Romero as the only player back in the 96th minute and have him smash it up there and hope for the best. That's how we got through to the Champions League final for crying out loud. But no, it's all too systematic. And if you're a defender, you must be fed up of playing in this system as well. Van der Ven, it probably does suit him in all honesty. We haven't seen him in a low block. But Dragazin, I watched him for Romania. Unbelievable in a low block. Obviously, he should be doing, you know, better at Spurs. But still, he's not a ball-playing centre-back. So why did we sign him in the first place? He's your old-school centre-back who's going to block everything and get his head on everything. Not your centre-back who's going to play out from the back, have control with the ball at his feet and start spraying, you know, balls forward like Romero can. You know... We've got players at this football club who don't suit the system. We've got players who look checked out. One thing we haven't got is a leader. And something that Danny said on the um, on the Tottenham Away live stream yesterday. Check it out if you haven't already. And he makes a very, very good point on there. Um, it was something along the lines of, when you look at a bench, you want different options. You want players who can bring something different to the team. We don't really have that. We have carbon copy players. If Pissouma comes off... Saar comes on. Can he play a different, you know, position to Bissouma? Maybe. But is he that different of a player? No, same with Ben Tanker. The only one I can really think of in the team is maybe Madison and Kudusevsky. They both offer something different in that number 10. But, you know, Brennan Johnson, does he offer much different to Timo Werner? Does he offer much different to Hyung min Sun? Does he offer much different to Wilson Odebert? A majority of our squad, as I say, are full of similar players. And when you look at some of the most successful teams, you know, in the Premier League, for example, this season, Liverpool, they've got about five or six different attacking options who all bring something different to the team. I get that you want every player drilled into the system, but why have we not gone out there and signed maybe a six foot five striker who late in a game we can smash it up top two, you know, who can win headers or is a danger from corners when we're 
when we're 1-0 down in a game, a tricky game like the Ipswich one? Why have we not signed someone, as I say, who can do something different at this football club? You're looking at that bench, and Madison's on there, but when Madison's on the pitch, who have we got to actually bring on who can change a game? No one, because they're going to do very similar things to the players on the pitch. The players have to take uh, accountability for yesterday, in my opinion. They were all very poor. They all hid away. We haven't got leaders. They're a weak-minded squad, to be honest. But the manager, as I say, is, is partly responsible for the players being weak-minded. He's the one who's meant to lead them. Obviously, we need a captain, in my opinion, a proper leader. But the manager's meant to be, you know, the biggest leader. Sir Alex Ferguson, proper leader, you know. Arsene Wenger, more of a manager. Fergie, coach and a manager. But you get what I'm saying, Yeah. We don't have a leader on the pitch. We don't have a leader on the sidelines. So when things start going tits up, who's there to get the group together and pick things up? When things start going uh, don't go our way in games, we crumble like a chocolate digestive in a milky tea. Things need to be sorted out at this football club, in my opinion. And as I say, personally, I can no longer stick with this manager. I think the return has been terrible in the last 38 games. 16 lost, 17 won. Five losses in 11 games. That's nearly 50% of our games lost so far this season in the Premier League. It's not like we've lost to the top sides either. We've got Man City next. So if you lose that, of course, it's frustrating. But at least you can say, hey, it's Man City. No, we've lost to Crystal Palace, giving them their first win of the season. Ipswich, first win of the season, you know. It's been poor. It's been really, really poor. It's frustrating because I really did want to believe in this manager. And I've tried to at points this season. I've tried to convince myself again that maybe he is the right man for the job after certain results. But... There is no consistency with our results. There is no consistency with performances on the pitch. There is no consistency with the tactical tweaks from this manager, his substitutions. And in my opinion, that lack of consistency should cost him his job. And it probably will. You look at our next three games, Man City, Bournemouth, Fulham, all very, very tough. Bournemouth away as well. They've just beaten, um, beaten Man City and Arsenal at home. So, yeah, I think time's running out for Ange Postacoglu. I didn't want Conte out. I didn't want Jose out. I was, you know, one of the very few who said at the end, you don't really have any other option, but they're managers who have been let down by the ownership. Yet, yeah, this is the first manager I'm actually turning on probably since since Nuno, really. I've lost the faith. I've lost the faith, you know. Comments that he comes out with, the results that we're getting, the performances that we've got. He's more overhyped and gets better PR than any other Spurs manager I've seen in my life. And in my opinion, I've lost faith. I'm not going to come on here because I've calmed down a bit now the day after and go, and Joe, he's a disgrace, he's a disgrace, you know, he's an amateur Sunday league manager. But yeah, just not at a level for the Premier League in my opinion. It's a shame. I wanted to get behind him, but I've given up faith. I still hope he proves me wrong. If we do keep him, I hope we go on to win like two trophies and I say fair play, Ange, you know, but I can't see it. I can't see it. Constantly feels like one step forward, two steps back at this football club, especially under this manager. And the return since the new manager bounce has been pitiful. Guys, I'm going to make like a banana and split. Take care of yourselves. Have a smashing rest of your day. Also, fair play to Ipswich. I said at the beginning, Schmodix with a great goal for second in. They defended really well, made it tough for us. We could only score from a corner. We didn't actually create any clear cut chances. So credit to them. But guys, I'm going to make like a banana and split. All the best, and as always, come on you Spurs.